Tanya Ganella Fritchner, Snipe Clan and citizen of the Onondaga Nation, is a lawyer, activist, and professor of American Indian Law, and president and founder of the American Indian Law Alliance, a non-governmental organization in consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council, and the former North American rep representative to the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Tonya served as legal and diplomatic counsel to indigenous delegations in virtually all United Nations International um, for affecting indigenous peoples, especially during the drafting and negotiations and passage of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which sets the minimum standard for survival, dignity, and individual and collective rights of indigenous peoples globally. Chiefs, faith keepers, leaders, relatives, and distinguished guests. Last weekend, um, myself and the Haudenosaunee delegation, including Chief Warren Lyons, attended an international meeting. It was about the United Nations and the delegates were from North America, North American indigenous peoples. And we were there because of the work and the vision of our leaders for decades and decades ago. Our leader, Chief Lyons, reminded us that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> and that's what we have been doing since 1923 when a Cayuga chief by the name of Descahe traveled to Geneva, Switzerland to the League of Nations to talk about and complain and file a complaint against the government of Canada. He was not able to enter the League of Nations, but by 1977, a delegation of indigenous peoples from the Western Hemisphere, under the invitation of non-governmental organizations, did enter the United Nations in Geneva under the human rights bodies and opened that door. They opened that door and it has never been the same since. And governments will tell you that. Civil society with the leadership of indigenous peoples opened those doors because we knew and we wanted a seat at the table. Indigenous peoples understood that when you have exhausted all your legal remedies, where do you turn? Well, you turn to the two world wampum because that has already set the standards some 400 years ago that indigenous nations treat and deal on a nation to nation level. In North America, we do that with the United States and we do that with Canada. And we move that forward. We move those discussions forward. We saw two important forums open within the United Nations, so we had that seat. The Working Group on Indigenous Populations in 1982, with the leadership of the Haudenosaunee. And in 2000, the establishment of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. So here we are, some decades later, that the struggle to draft, negotiate, and complete a Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples was <coughs> completed, and it was adopted by a vote inside the UN General Assembly. 144 countries voted yes, 
four countries voted no, and 11 abstained. Among those countries who said no, who have much in common with the history of indigenous peoples, were the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. But by 2010, the last holdout, the United States, acknowledged the declaration. They didn't adopt it, they didn't make it law or acknowledge it as law, but they did say that we will look at this declaration, but we will apply it under domestic law, not under international human rights law. And for them, and this is was President Obama's statement in 2010. He said that what has been established under this declaration is something called a different form of the right of self-determination. We looked at each other and we asked, wait a minute, isn't that why we went to the United States in the first place? <coughs> We went because we knew we were not peoples with an S. We knew we didn't have the right to self-determination or the protection of our human and collective rights. That is why we brought forward the international human rights instrument called the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. If we didn't have those rights, then we will write our own declaration for our own rights. And our people did it. It was almost 20 years of negotiation and de deliberation. It was the longest deliberated human rights instrument in the history of the United Nations. But we have it something that protects our right to self-determination just like every other people's with an S, protects our right to free prior, pre, free prior and informed consent when it comes to the use of our lands, resources, and territories. So we have come full circle in a way that we see is very positive. Yes, we have more work to do. And that work is working with some of those developed countries who do not understand the correct interpretation of the rights of self-determination. Thank you.